Okay, so for those who is actually joining for the first time, uh, and who are unsure of who I am, uh, I'm actually Kai Jin. So maybe your friends have invited you along as and as well. Um, so I'm actually a second year student, uh, studying econs and finance. I decided to start this whole project, uh, in terms of, uh, wanting to share more regarding my, my passion as well as my experience in investment itself. This is not a financial advice, uh kind of tutorial whatsoever uh it's solely for entertainment purposes so if let's say you would like to proceed uh to take further action you know please uh consult your respective financial advisor or do the necessary research to do that um so why i have actually decided to start this is because there is many misconceptions out there uh regarding um on how to start as well as the difficulties um i have also seen friends you know who have invested into crypto as well as into mlm which is multi-level marketing and um because of hype or the promise of fast cash and you know lost a substantial amount of their savings in the end. So what I want to hopefully after this after this period of sessions uh to sort of like um enlighten people in terms of the various kind of things out there and what to look out for and what not to do and stuff like that. Lah, to in terms of financially literate yourself, guiding you along the way and stuff. So I mean investment is supposed to be very simple. Um yeah, but one thing for sure is it won't be a smooth journey. So if that's what you're asking for, then there's a lot of reading involved. Um, what I focus on is just fundamental analysis, uh, which is fundamental investing. So most of my sharing will orientate around it. Lah. So yeah, let's begin. So for the first week itself, uh, I touch on, I mean a little recap is I touch on financial literacy. Um, I share on how to get started as well as the instrument that is you know, presented in the finance financial world. So for global affairs, which is on for the second session, I touched on how the economic economies can affect each other as well as them themselves by itself. Um, as well as how various relationship with other country is vital in terms of Singapore prosperity. Yeah. So last week I touched on portfolio management, which is using which is setting uh, your goal as well as using various instruments to achieve them. Um, understanding a little bit more of the various instruments in terms of the debt as well and um finalizing your own personal risk management also. This week itself, I'll be touching more on company valuation, uh, discuss on how you know we can value a business, understanding their uh, framework models or management, etc. Uh, as well as their potential outlook, the growth, the futures. So I'll be touching a little on their financial statement do they later at the end. Um, the company I'll be talking about will be SIA. So uh, the first part of this session, I'll just uh, share and uh, try to explain in in a little bit more detail on how you can understand a certain company within a business. Ah. So without further ado, let's start. Um, along the way, if you have any question or so, just feel free to drop down in the chat, then I'll get to that at the end uh, under the Q&A session itself. Okay, so the, what we're gonna talk about, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I touched a bit. So the motivation behind buying and selling, able to understand um, the emotions, setting emotions aside and making the decision clearly. Lah. Stop clouding the judgment and stuff like that understanding what you're investing into. Um, these are the major don'ts that I, I will refrain uh, people from doing. Um, this is what actually what most people are doing in the market at this point of time. So why are actually people selling is yeah, due to hype, uh, fear of missing out as well as the illusion of fast money. Lah. Um, this is something you don't want to do, uh, letting emotional or tertiary factor you know, to cloud your judgment. Um, that's why I always emphasize in terms of reading up on the company itself, uh, reading up on the news, the global affairs to understand what re what's really going on out there and what could potentially affect your portfolio or your investment, uh, which could indirectly affect your goals. Lah. Uh, so what we are missing into regardless of the various disruptions. So what we want to understand what are the pos possible disruptions that's out there as well as what are the other possible prosperity, I would say. Yeah. So we'll be talking a little bit about um, the discipline and how you should act as an investor. I'll be touching on the checklist you can use for yourself uh, in terms of choosing a business, simple understanding of the various ratios uh, in order to aid your research. Lah. Okay, feel, uh, you'll, be, you'll be a bit wordy and lengthy for this portion because uh, I try to squeeze it as com concise as much as possible. So yeah. Um, okay, so there are many ways uh, out there to ana uh, analyze a certain business and I'll be just sharing a few that I use very often. Uh. So for revenue itself, we want to you know, further understand how uh, they are achieve, uh, achieving the results. Uh, how, how do they you know, um, get their profits in a sense? Um, the health of the company through their balance sheet, 
um, every, uh, everyone can say, you know, buy cheap and sell high, but the questions that we want to ask ourselves is, um, will the company be able to recover, recover through, for example, during tough time like this? Yeah, you can buy cheap now, but is the company able to sustain, um, sustain their, 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 their operation during times like this? Um, and will they able to excel when this period of time is over? Uh, we also want to look into a management team, uh, team that you like, uh, never shortchange yourself. Because being a shareholder, you're essentially the CEO of yourself. Um, is you should probably take it like when you invest into a business or a company, you should take it as like it's your own personal, uh, personal business, personal company. So as if like you're running it. So um, last but not least, uh, I think it's the market share, which is um, something that indicates and tells us how much influence they are within that, that, within that particular sector itself. So for example, if you look in the telco industry, you know that the leading company, leading business at this point is Singtel, followed by Starhub and the rest. And I'll talk about it later in the, nearing the end. Um, to further aid your decision making, in, uh, make, um, making decision making in event that you found two companies are pretty similar. Uh, for example, if you think that Singtel and Starhub, they are, they are very similar. So what can you, you know, further uh, filter them in terms of um, criteria? So you can look at tangible, how having such as, for example, having various inventory such as raw materials, in other, in other words, assets, like machinery, machineries, will help them generate um, for, uh, profit for the company itself. So assets that are actually used to help business generate um, certain kind of cash flow. Um, for reputation relationship would be the firms itself in the business world. Um, how honest they are if let's say uh, they did a mistake or how fast they can recover after that as well because uh, of their relationship with their, maybe their partners or their supplier or producer. Aptitude uh, would be the adaptability in terms of the view of change. So um, you look at how Nokia got phased out when iPhone and Samsung start stepping up in terms of smartphone within the uh, phone, within the uh, mobile industry. So you have to see the company attitude towards change. So that's something you have to ask yourself. Um, capabilities wise would be the R&D team, you know, the power to innovate. So you look at Tesla and you look at SpaceX, how willing are they, you know, to sort of like revolutionize the, to change how people approach the transport industry, uh, bring humans to Mars, you know, uh, using less fuels uh, consumption to, you know, get you from, a, uh, from uh, point A to point B. Okay, as for knowledge would be, you know, they're leading, uh, are, they, are they leading in their particular industry? For example, are they a follower or are they a, a, a leader? So if you look at the uh, consumer and beverage industry, you want to invest in company like um, Coca-Cola. You don't want to do into Pepsi because you know that they are like the second rate. Not that they are bad, but why... Why choose them when you can choose the, the leader, you know, to choose the, 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 A, the ACE team. So all these just a guideline as to how, you know, you can approach the various businesses out there. Um, you don't have to follow this. I mean, if you have better other alternatives, then just go ahead with it. But whatever that is being shared here is more or less likely sort of like, um, uh, I would say, you can just put it as, it's just my, 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 my own way of doing things. Lah. I mean, if it's good, you can keep it. If it's not, then yeah. If you have better ideas, then feel free to share. So next, I mean, to sum it all up, um, I think we don't, um, we don't look at, as an investor itself, we don't want to look at uh, our portfolio and have many changes frequently. I mean, one, one reason is because of the brokerage fee out there. Um, the other is because market is very volatile. If you're going to do it for the short term, you will see volatility everywhere. You won't understand why your portfolio is not growing. But if you do it on long term scale, you know that no company, no business out there is set up to lose money or set up to fail. So that's one thing for sure. So a good business will always do well and the stock price will always sort of like indicate that, that the particular business. Lah. So choose wise, um, don't try to... Uh, Follow, follow the trend or something like that. So boring is good. Unpleasant is always good. Most news are noise. And why we say that is because um, how the media industry at this point in time, 21st century work is unlike in the old times whereby they really give you proper news, like news that, that is happening around the world. But this time is because media industry, they are being paid as um, paid per view. So if they are not able to generate something, a content whereby they can generate, uh, I mean, attract, uh, 
people like us to view, they, they, are, they won't be making money. They won't survive in this current time, especially given that Facebook, Google, all the advertising agencies are using more of like social platform. They are pretty much losing out on this end. Um, that's the reason why Singapore Press Holding is not doing very well in their newspaper, newspaper part of their business. Um, you want to invest in a company where you, know, you can fully understand them, similarly to how you want to choose a partner in life. So you choose your girlfriend, boyfriend, you don't just suka suka. Cause oh, he good looking, then you okay. If that's the case, then um, I I I have no say. But um, yeah, I believe if you want to choose a husband or wife, you want to pick someone that you know that has of certain qualities because you will probably spend the rest of your life with them. So choose a company like how you're gonna choose your partner. So we look we look at long term as um we look at long term and similarly to how you know uh you can take it as how your parents brought you up. In terms of your investment wise, um, you you are the your you your, you yourself are the investment to your parents. They don't sell you off. Uh, they don't sell you and purchase another kid. You know during your rebellion years. So similarly to um stock wise. So if let's say during down times, don't just sell because you are afraid, but understand why the stock price is going down. Um, and understand if let's say the business that you invest into have a strong fundamental and quality. There's always a chance that no chance. Have faith and they will always go back up. Lah. And eh, I will show you next week on companies that have rebound um, from past crises such as 2008 uh, mortgage as well as 2002.com bus. Yeah. So simple terminology and uh, valuation would be the current ratio, which is debt to equity, current debt to current equity. I will share more a bit later when I talk about SIA. Um, <laughs> Price to earning itself is the price of the share to the earnings of the company. So earnings of a company is the equity, which is the earnings per share. Uh, I'll show you that later as well. Price to book is essentially price to the net asset value. Uh, return equity is just what you are getting off. For example, uh, the money you put into the company, how much are you getting back? Yeah. Dividend itself and dividend yield, there's a difference. So one is nominal and the other one is in percentage form. So the dividend is, for example, if I'm getting, if the, let's say the stock price is $1, the dividend I am getting is 10 cents. So the dividend yield is 10%. But if let's say the stock price were to go up to $2, the dividend, if the dividend still remain as 10 cents, the dividend yield I will be receiving is 5%, even though the dividend doesn't change. So that's one indicator as well. Um, I'll touch a little bit more on it next week in terms of how a uh, fundamental investor will analyze a particular company and what do we deem as a company that you will want to look into. Yeah. Current assets to current liability um, is also one of the ratio, but um, there's, there, there's also many other out there. There is like EBIT as well, like earnings before income uh, tax and everything, but um, we shall keep it to this few first. Then we'll touch on more next week. At Valen. Okay, a little bit fun fact is if you if you look at company much deeper and everything, you know Singapore is a very democratic country. I'm not I'm not gonna start anything political here, but um as you can see, you know, Tomasic Holdings itself is where which is owned by our government. Um if you all think that um we are our telco is not monopolized, then uh we have to think again because for example, Tomasic Holding they directly own Singtel. Um, Singtel owns 53.7% of the market share in the telco industry, uh, followed by Star 27%. The remaining is by TPG, your Circus Life, and blah, blah, so and so forth. So Tamasic, essentially, they, they own SPH and Capital and ST Telemedia. ST Telemedia, they own Starhub as well. So essentially, Singapore owns almost about 80, yeah, 80% 80 of your telco, telco market share. Yeah. So yeah, just a fun fact. Lah. Uh, I'm not sure whether any of y'all want to invest into any of the um, uh, 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 um, mobile uh, telco industry, any of the company there. So yeah. So a simple breakdown on how you know you can approach this is uh you know this this takes time. Lah. So for some companies, it took me a few weeks, you know, to fully understand uh to find, understand it. And there are those which I completely don't understand at all, which is totally fine. Um so for example. McDonald itself, you know, a real business is their real business isn't fast food. It's real estate. Their byproduct is fast food. And we have to understand their business as a whole. If you want to invest into McDonald, you need to know why they pick real estate first. The location in terms of uh, attracting food for into their vicinity. So the other example will be Starbucks. 
their business is to sell an experience of a third space. It's not, um, coffee is not, coffee is just their byproduct. Uh, if they were to compete within the cafe industry, buying a $7 cup of coffee is not as attractive as it seems. Lah, huh? If let's say their sole purpose is, is to sell, uh, sell coffee. Um, how you can see is because they don't chase customer out when they purchase a coffee. There, there's, it's not like a uh, coffee bean or like any other cafe out there whereby when during peak hour, they'll chase you away because they would like to attract more customer. That's not how Starbucks works. I think the last company you would like to view is Apple. Um, many might argue, but their real business is not the devices that they are selling. Their real business is lifestyle. Um, why I say that is because you never ever seen an Apple user with a dusty MacBook. If you have one, please invite me. I mean, like, please share him with me or like, 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 link me up with him. I would like to get to know him a little bit better. Yeah. So last but not least, I think we have to ask ourselves, why are we willing buying it? So as a fundamental uh, investor, I owe, why the reason why I'm buying the company? Because I trust that their fundamental is strong enough. Be it tough times like the COVID-19 or maybe a financial crash whatsoever, I trust that company will not only do well, but will be able to ride through the disruption and you know, and excel even further after after the crash. Um, also want to look in the company where have they have potential outlook, which has growth potential that can you know um, do even better among their peers within the same sector. You want to see something like um, uh, how should I? Singapore, Singapore don't have. Okay, you look at the U.S. market. You look at Tesla. It's one of them. They are outpacing and um, and, and outgrowing in the what's that, in the transportation industry itself. They are winning Volvo and like Toyota all this if you're competing with them. Lah. Um, so why are we, so the other question is when do we start selling them if we know that the company is so good? Um, because we essentially as a fundamental you want to invest them, you want to hold a company for a period of maybe 10 to 20 years or even longer. Um, and there's only few reasons as to why we would sell them is because the deterioration of management it no longer aligns with you. They they have their core structure has changed and certain things they do which doesn't lead to whatever that you're seeking for which in terms of misalignment with your vision and that's the reason why you want to sell or, with, or if they lost the economic mode means if they lost the ability to innovate and, you know, and, and, and follow the change within a particular industry then that's the time whereby I will sell them off. Yes. Sir. So without further ado, I have come to the end. If you have a question, leave it here. Um, if not, I will start looking into SIA. Do any of you have any questions so far? Okay, I think it's no. Okay, okay. So like I mentioned, to you all the terminology, the ratios out there. Essentially, what the price to earning ratio is for every six dollars that you put into this company, you're getting one dollar back, and that's called price to earning ratio. So certain companies have a higher price to earning ratio. Certain companies have a lower. So for every night, so for example, for SIA, right? Their uh, price to earning ratio is 9.9. .9. So for every $9 you put in the company, they'll get $1 back. That's how you should interpret P ratio. Then this is where you get your earnings per share, which is your letter E here. So if you take this divided by this, you get this number. Okay, so we move forward to dividend. They are, they are issuing forward dividend means their future. Um, potential, I mean like the projected outlook of how, SI, how much SI is going to pay you. So their, int their intent is to pay 30 cents per annum. For, means for fiscal year 2020. And if you divide this by this, you get your dividend yield of 4.82%. Um, however, I would strongly suggest not to use this as an indicator, uh, but use it more of like a part of a checklist. Lah. Have a few checklists. Once it meets the criteria, then you can, you know, they decided to, you know, you want to buy the company or so. Um, I tend not to look at the chart in terms of uh, the reason being is because uh, to filter it out, like, I don't want to have some bias state. But you want to look at it when after I finish everything. So you can see the growth, the historical growth of that company. Is it too confusing? I hope not. If there's certain uh, points you, all, you guys like me to explain a little bit further, just let me know. Huh? Okay, so from this, you're able to see their particular uh, P ratio, the more in depth, the price to earning, uh, the price to book. So you, right now, you know that it's below, it's net asset value. 
So for example, your six dollar itself, right, means you are trading below fair value. That um, yep. So I won't touch on the rest. That these are the rest of the ratios that you can learn as a whole, and you can use them as a a, a sort of like a a guideline to further analyze your company. Okay, I think I'll just jump right straight to the financial statement on how to read it from a glance. I won't go into in depth, but if you want, uh, I can do that to y'all. I mean, I if y'all want to learn more, I can. We can do it offline. Um, so total revenue in a sense is what the company earn. Uh, so right now we know that uh, this is in thousands. Uh, so right now we know that um, the total revenue by SIA is sixteen million. Uh, the cost of the cost to achieve this revenue is here. 13 million, so the gross profit is 2.9 million. So after deducting this one, you get 2.9 million. And after all the operating expenses and everything, your income is, they got a positive income at 1.1. If, if there's a negative sign here, it shows that they are making a loss. Lah. So after the tax and everything, their net income is 723. Yeah, 723,000 here, but it's still in thousand. So uh, it's actually 723 million dollars. So this is their net income. Now we move on to their balance sheet. So simple breakdown is to identify their assets and their liability. Assets is like, such as their plane, their plants, their manufacturing, their offices, everything. Uh, the oil, the gear, the, the spare parts, the materials and everything. So we jump right straight to the total uh, current assets, which is 5.4. Total assets. So current assets is assets that is able to sell off within the year itself. Uh, looking more long term, like for example, like property and plants, you cannot sell off a property or plant, uh, at least not in the near term. That's why it's uh, stated here, um, it will take longer period of time. So total assets will be about 30 billion at this point in time. Um, then as for the liability, similarly, current liabilities is what uh, they have to pay off. SI had to pay off within the first year. Uh, then uh, followed by the rest, uh, which is like deferred tax, long-term debt and stuff like that. So the total liability is 16.8 billion. So if you minus these two, you get your total stockholders equity, which is 13.2 itself. So I will show you DBS itself and I will show you why uh, I want to in invest into uh, uh, SIA. So as you know, the current situation, right? Um, why I chose not to invest in SIA because they right now, if they are not able to generate the same kind of revenue, right? Given that they have this much liability, right? That they have to pay off in the near term, it would prove a problem to them in the short run. And especially as now government is trying to raise, I think, $8.8 .8 billion for them, uh, out of which three point something billion is in terms of uh, convertible bonds. Yeah. So for their cash flow at this point in time, Trailing 12 months is actually negative. So we know that they are not doing very well at this point in time. So do they have the power to maintain? I mean, to, to still sustain in terms of their business and everything? My answer is yes, because they are essentially the bloodline of Singapore. Convertible bonds, how do they benefit them? Um, okay, it's essentially like, remember back then when I shared with you how bonds work is essentially raising... Uh, selling debts to investors. So when they want to raise capital, they want to raise money for their company, right? They will issue bonds. So upon maturity date, the company will pay you back. But before that, whatever money that you have invested in them, uh, they'll use it to you know, fund their own operation and stuff like that. So upon maturity, convertible bonds, uh, as an investor, you have two choices. Is you can get it in, uh, upon maturity, you can get it in cash or you can get it in terms of equities. So as shares, lah. elementum. So, if you look at DBS, which is very different, look at income statement, their revenue is 14.5 billion, similarly to comparatively, okay. So, we just compare side by side. Lah, huh? It's not much, not far apart, but then the operating expense is, is pretty minimal at, um, 6.2, whereas this one is 13.9. Um, therefore, which results to a higher net income, which is, as y'all can see, is the difference. 6.3 and 7, 723. And that is the huge difference lah, as to why, um, if given a choice, which company will I invest into? 
So yeah, let's look at their balance sheet. Yep. So as you can see, their total assets is much. Um, their total assets is much, way way about yeah way higher uh comparatively to um SIA. So you know that in terms of downtime whatsoever, they still still have the I would say the capability lah to ride through this disruption and excel even further after that. Yeah, and. I mean, this one is given. Lah. So the cash flow itself is actually in the positive region, whereas for SIA is in the negative. Lah. Um, and this is not counting in the $8.8 .8 billion in debt that they are issuing. So yeah, I've come to the end. Oh yeah, so what I'm doing is actually I'm doing cross-sector uh, comparison um, because there isn't much airline in, in Singapore other than Scoot, which is also owned by SIA. I wanted to cover a little bit more on um, how SIA runs, but I'm running out of time. So yeah, I'll probably cover on this next week. So, okay, if I want to compare banks and OCBC, what are the differences? Uh, for example, DBS Bank, OCBC and UOB, what are the key differences is DBS is a people bank. OCBC and UOB is a, is a family-owned bank. Not say family-owned bank, but they are, they are run in a family structure. Lah. It, is, it started off by a, from a family. Ma. So in terms of lending-wise, DBS would be more willing to lend, whereas for OCBC and UOB, they tend to be more conservative. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, we, we still need a bank out there, especially um, uh, in times like this, you know. Do you consider alpha and beta in your stock pick? Um, I consider beta because it's one of the risk indicator. Alpha wise, it would depend because it will depend on the current situation at current times. So they managed to answer the questions. Okay. OCBC. Hands down OCBC, DBS, then followed by UOB. Okay, UOB is more um, globally diversified, whereas for DBS and OCBC, they tend to be, they, they I won't say focus, but they have more assets allocation, allocated in the Asian region. Um, most uh, substantial amount in Hong Kong. So the current riot, the current situation there is not that ideal. Lah. But Hong Kong still stands as a credible financial hub at this point in time. Yeah. And why I pick OCBC first? Because it's a family business. Lah. So in a sense, um, they are more, not say stingy, lah, but they tend to be more picky in terms of uh, lending out money. Yeah. And as for DBS, it's the best bank in Singapore. Um, they have a low funding. Is it low funding or low lending? Low funding, I think. Uh, because they recently, quite a few years back, they acquire um, POSB. Yeah, they are people's bank. Lah. They tend to look out for their people in a sense. And most of the Singaporeans here, they have POSB bank. What do you think along? Um, Great Eastern itself is not doing that bad, actually. Um, even though it's their subsidiary, but Great Eastern, has, I mean, sorry, OCBC as a whole, they do have the power and the financial capability to take care of, um, take care of Great Eastern. So I have no qualms with that. Okay, so yeah, because one of the reasons why uh, I think I'll be pushing on to next week, next week will be a part two whereby I'll cover in terms of more in-depth and further usage of the particular ratios for SIA itself. So this week, um, I'm mainly just touching on um, how a fundamental investor should look um, in terms of if he want to start his journey um, and what are the key ratios that he can look out for as well as what are the methods he can use to filter out certain businesses. Yes. Any more questions? Um, emitting noise is, uh, okay, for example, okay, so for example, um, 
Wait, let me think of a uh, noise. Okay, why not you give me a news? Okay, why not I show your uh, channel's new Asia here, then I will show you why it's noise. Okay, I stand up. That's considered a news. I mean, it might, it's, just, it's my own opinion, so you, you should gauge yourself as well what is considered noise to you. Concern over uh, special attention to be moved to separate them. Oh, I have one. The self-made tycoon also much bang will affect the shareholder. Definitely will. Um, if they are not able to pay off the debt, then that's where all the defaults start coming in and. Okay, I came across this article. This is called Noise. Women's leaders and alpha males up against COVID-19. It's just trying to attract viewers. This is considered noise. You yeah, it doesn't aid in your in your um what do you call it? Your your planning. Yes. Yes, sensual how to pronounce sensual. Yeah, yeah, y'all get it. Y'all know that my pronunciation. Sensationalist. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so y'all know that this is the kind of article that, that is considered noise uh, because they only attract viewer. I mean shit need to do that. Like, it's not they they their SPH is going down down bus, man. Yeah. Any more questions? Um Yeah, what we want is a legit news with numbers and facts. So what are the news that you want to look out for is for example Straits Times, right? Recently the Virgin Airline. So for example, I talk about SIA stocks and um, SIA has 20% ownership of Virgin Airlines. Virgin Airlines is an Australian airline run by, uh, what's his name called? Virgin, uh, by this guy, like, the white hair one. I cannot, I suddenly forget his name. Um, yeah, so this company essentially collapsed as coronavirus wipe out literally the global air travel. Not wipe out the company, wipe out global air travel. So this company is not doing very well at this point of time, Virgin Australia, which is a substantial amount, which their revenue contribute to um, SIA investment uh, portfolio. Yes, Richard Branson, thank you. So you know how does their own personal investment affect SIA? That's the reason why SIA, you know, near future, they might not be able to do very well, but uh, long term wise, I'll talk about it next week. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, things can be quantified with statistics and figures, although you do need to check out the stats and they are thrown out just as a small kid. Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to further dig into, so what I have actually found out, this is their annual report. I mean, I wanted to share this today, but then like I didn't have a chance to because I'm running out of time. It's a 237 page report and we can essentially see Virgin Airlines, which is part of here, and SIA owns a lot of other airlines other than Virgin Airlines, such as Tata, SIA, or this. And you can see which country they own, Singapore, Singapore, Hong Kong, and stuff like that. Yeah. So these are the other companies that SIA has invested their money into. So if these companies are not doing well, they don't have the money to give SIA in a sense. So in other sense, SIA investment is not doing well as well, uh, and which contribute their profits. And yeah, if the numbers is not going up, it definitely will be going down. Yeah. So if there's no question, I mean, if there's more question, um, feel free to, you know, PM me and stuff like that. Um, I'll, I don't mind doing a one-for-one -one sharing session with you guys. For those who are interested or would like to start their journey, um, just PM me. We can set a time and date. Um, I'm doing it for free, literally. Um, just sharing. Uh, this is not a financial advice or guide. It's solely for entertainment purposes only. So, yeah. Thank you for joining and enjoy your evening. Um, if you all have further questions, yeah. PME because I less than one minute.
Yes, sir. Cheers. I'll see you all next week to talk more about SIA and any other company that you all like to talk about. Yep. Okay, I'll talk into SIA engineering as well. I'll just let this thing run until the times went out. So, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like, just, just drop me a text there. Now we can fix a time and stuff like that. Why Insta Life? The one, uh, No time. Then how? Find time, ah. Uh. Make time. Priorities, yours. Okay, yeah. I will.